So uh, during my talk earlier today, I have shown the results of this benchmark where uh, I was, uh, Q is a pointer to unsigned long. So I was incrementing an unsigned long under the protection of std mutex or under protection of a spin log that I wrote myself and uh, using atomicals uh, in a few other ways. And uh, I, these were the results. Uh, during the talk, I only showed the eight threads, but so uh, you, you can see the atomic increment, uh, this is how L items per second here are increments per second. One thread can do 200 something million increments per second. It drops down to 80 something when you go to 16 threads. Uh, this is how many cores this machine has. Uh, with uh, the mutex, with a spin lock, it's 167 and it stays more or less flat. With the mutex, it starts at 80, which is you know not so bad. If you want to know what bad is, that's what bad looks like. Uh, compare and swap starts about the same as uh, like a spin lock, then drops off. So basically, I was asked uh, the question, how did I how did I do this? I'm just going to show you the code for this spin lock because it's very short. So here is the spin lock. Uh, so first of all, uh, pretend that this for loop is a while loop. And it only looks at this, term, at this middle, the, the condition for exit from the while loop. Ignore all the i and 8 and all that stuff for a second. So the, 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 if you just start with an exchange, that's your basic spin lock. Uh, you exchange whatever is in the flag with one. If you get back one, it was already one and somebody else is holding it. If you get back zero, it was zero. You were the first to write one into it. You own the lock, go. Uh, and to release it, you uh, write zero in it. Now you don't have to do any fancy tricks because you own it. Nobody else is trying to change it, so you just write zero. Trick number one, before you go and do an exchange, which is a write operation, well, a read-write, any write operation requires an exclusive lock on the cache line. That's the part that makes it slow. Before you do an exchange, you probe it with a read-only operation. And if you get back a one, then you know that it's already locked. You don't have a chance of, of, of succeeding. You read it again. And you keep reading it, only reading, without trying to write. You don't need an exclusive cache lock for that. So you, you keep hitting it with a read-only operation without getting the cache lock until you get back a zero, and now you will probably get it. This is the very brief window of vulnerability. If some other thread comes in and locks it at this little gap here, then your exchange will fail and you will go on, on the next loop. OK, so that's trick number one. Trick number two, what happens if you keep hammering at it and you can't get the lock? Well, you may be hammering at it for a while. The problem is the scheduler actually loves you. The scheduler says, this is a very busy thread doing a lot of computing. Let's give it more time slices. Uh, now, there is another thread somewhere out there which is actually trying to do this, trying to get its word in to release the lock. That's the thread you're waiting on. There is only one problem. The scheduler loves you. The scheduler hates that guy. <laughs> so that thread that would have unlocked the lock for you isn't getting any time slices and you're burning the CPU trying to get the lock, which will never change. Eventually, it will. There is, I mean, they have some kind of fairness. So eventually, everybody gets their shot, but it reduces the throughput. Now comes basically the black magic. How do you give up the control of the scheduler? Uh, the traditional way is called sketch yield on Linux. I've tested sketch yield, I've tested nanosleep, I've tested several other things. Empirically, on a wide range of Linux uh, versions and kernels and wide range of hardware, nanosleep is better for the overall throughput than sketch yield and anything else. You also, on one hand, you don't want to call nanosleep every time. It's not that cheap. But you also don't want to spin for too long because now you'll start burning up CPU and starving the other thread, the ones that wants to unlock your mutex. Again, black magic, you measure with 8, you measure with 12, you measure with 16. And on a pretty wide range of hardware, like between 8 and 12 is an optimal number. Uh, this is from our implementation that was test, uh, benchmarked uh, 10 years ago and again about five years ago. The latest uh, CPUs with the UPI links between multiple sockets, this is not quite option optimal anymore. We're currently rebenchmarking it again. The trick that I'm not showing is gradually increasing the sleep time. And I'm not showing it simply because it's a lot of empirically chosen back off strategies which are volatile with respect to the hardware 
it's very long code, and I don't want you to actually, you know, take my word for it that this is the right one because it's only the right one for briefly. So that's how I've done it. All right. <laughs>